year-round scouting habits for a successful trophy deer hunting season. Hello, I'm Keith Cantelmo, and we're going to discuss the tips to help guarantee your success the next time you head out deer hunting. I guess we should start off with, why do you deer hunt? Obviously, to bag a trophy deer that other hunters would be in awe of. To fill the freezer. Maybe it's just to enjoy some time with family and friends. Or just for a little bit of personal relaxation. Whatever the reason, you should consider developing year-round scouting habits. A common mistake made by most deer hunters is they only begin their scouting maybe a few weeks or a month before the hunting season actually begins. In truth, you need to prepare year-round to ensure your success during the hunting season. So what exactly does this mean? It means you should be out there scouting during the off months. This one thing alone can increase your success tenfold. Consider networking with other hunters. Spend time connecting with them. Share some information about prime locations. And yes, yes, I know, no one wants to give up this information. But if you give a little, you may get a little. Be sure to talk about more than just the previous hunting season, though. Go back several years. Develop some trends about the deer in your area. Do some online research. Spend time hitting up the search engines such as Google, Yahoo, and Bing. They can help you to define some prime hunting locations in your area. Stop in in the local registration areas. These are sometimes called the deer check-in stations. These are great resources of information about where the biggest bucks have been taken. Then there's always private landowners. Anyone who's hunted for any period of time knows that hunting on private land is generally more productive than hunting on public land. And surprisingly, a good number of landowners wouldn't have a problem letting you scout or hunt on their land. The key, of course, is to make this contact with them before the hunting season begins. Develop a relationship with them. Get them to trust you and have them realize that you will care for their land. If you have the opportunity, enter into a hunting lease at least for this season, but if possible, for several seasons to come. Entering into a hunting lease with private landowners is a very effective way of securing private property for you to hunt on. As a matter of fact, it's such a big topic, we're going to discuss it in future videos. Don't be afraid to contact the local fish and game department. They are obviously a valuable resource. Ask them about the hunting statistics in the area you plan to hunt. Also ask them about the number of deer per square mile in your area. They are going to have this information in order to better use their conservation efforts and coordinate those with the hunting licenses that they issue. Speaking of hunting licenses, ask them how many licenses they've issued for this coming season. Once you decide where you're going to hunt, whether it's public or private land, you should get a map of the area. This will only help to increase your success. I would ask you to take it one step further, and instead of using just a standard map, consider getting a topographical map. They're a little more expensive, but the great detail will help you to understand the terrain you're hunting. Also, consider downloading images from Google Earth. This is a free service on the internet that allows you to download satellite images of the area you intend to hunt. Now, there's the choice of a bow or a rifle. Either way, it's a very personal choice. But to get the most out of each and every hunting season, you need to be prepared to use both weapons. How, did you, how to prepare and how to use these weapons we'll discuss in future videos. Consider joining several hunting clubs. These clubs are valuable, valuable pieces of the pie when it comes to hunting trophy whitetail deer. They can help you to determine the best areas to hunt. 
You could get advice, tips, and maybe even specific techniques to help you succeed in the area that you are hunting. Not to mention, it gives you time to discuss hunting and various techniques and weapons, etc. with like-minded individuals such as yourself. Let's not forget going to a local hunting store, pro shop, or even one of the big box stores. Chances are you're going to need some new hunting clothes or equipment. While you're there, take advantage of the knowledge that the workers have. Also, don't underestimate the knowledge of the customers that may be in the store. Especially in these local stores or pro shops, it's often a very close-knit community made up of deer hunting enthusiasts just like you, who are more than willing to share their stories and their information to help everyone involved. Then there's the taxidermist. Since trophy deer are often mounted, the taxidermist will have access to a tremendous amount of information. Therefore, visiting this type of business would very likely yield you a great amount of information. Then there's meat processors or butchers. There are obviously several in your area, whether they're individuals or a company that'll process venison. Go to them. Ask them where the best deer have been taken from, and for that matter, the greatest quantity of deer. This is very, very helpful information for your success. Consider a road trip. Drive around, find logging roads, fields, orchards, other telltale signs that deer may be in the area. When you're driving through these environments, you should also look for land with a water source, low valleys, even high ridges, and places where the tall grass allows for deer to bed in the area. These are often excellent indicators that you got a good chance of bagging a trophy buck. When you get out on foot in the potential areas you plan on hunting, look for shed antlers. Bucks often shed their antlers somewhere between January and March every year. Obviously, you'll want to take them with you. They're a good comparison to the following year to see how bucks grow, see what bucks may still be in the hunting pool, and not to mention if anyone else is scouting in the area, you don't want them to know about your perfect spot. Also while you're on foot, look for deer sign. Once you know the area, you can start scouting, spend a day just walking around, looking for hoof prints, droppings, bedding areas, rubs on trees and fence posts, or just scrapes on the ground. All great sign that you got a big buck in the area. Now, consider the human distraction factor. Trophy deer have a keen sense of smell, keen sense of sight. If you've hunted for any length of time, you know that. If there are humans in the area, they are gone. So when you're scouting around the land you're intent intending to hunt, look for any signs that humans have been there recently. Empty plastic bottles, food wrappers, shell casings, ATV trails, y you get the idea. If you find any, you may want to consider finding a different location to hunt, even one that may be miles away. The bottom line is, good habits breed success. By following these few suggestions that I've laid out for you, the next time you head out into the field and woods to go and hunt these trophy deer, you will gain a deeper knowledge and understanding of the whitetails and the culture that is whitetail deer hunting. I'd like to thank you for being here with us today and encourage you to visit our website. You can click, click on the link below and it'll take you directly to us where you can sign up for our free mini course or enter it into your browser at www.trophydeerhuntingsecrets.com. I'm Keith Kentomo. Thanks for being with us and we'll see you in future videos.